Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back now with Marie Mongrain. She is our fantastic friend, uh, coach, uh, mom, uh, and so much more. I got to I gotta go for the mom card. I see all your children in the background. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm just going to show it like since it's there. <laughs> oh, who is who? Oh, my goodness. Now, how many kids do you have? You have two? I have two. I have two. So I have my youngest here in pink, which is Emily. And my she's four years old. And my oldest here is Sophie, which is six years old. Beautiful. Yep. Just like me. I got the four and six year old, two little yeah. boys. Well, you look beautiful. We, we uh, decided to match a little bit with the little yes. diamonds and black, which I love. Um, let's talk a little bit about your company and you as a life coach, please introduce yourself. Yes. I am Mary of Mongrain. I live in Brossard. Now I'm going to brand myself as I live in Brossard because I'm not in Montreal really. <laughs> And I will talk, I will I have a story to tell you about this. So I, I, I'm a life coach. I've gone into life coaching uh, two years ago. I started in neurosciences. I discovered my spiritual side a little before that. And so now I'm helping people uh, with their spiritual awakening uh, in their journey of self-love. So I work with limiting beliefs, fears, and just going back and reframing all those childhood traumas that, you know, that are our coping mechanism that we use today to protect ourselves. And, and now we're going to step into a love frequency instead of a fear frequency. So that's what I like to do. Great. Well, we love having you here. Now, you work with people worldwide as a coach. What are some of the types of things as a life coach you can help someone with who's listening or watching us today? Uh, a lot of people I've worked with right now, it's, it's a little more quiet and I'm okay with that. But I've worked with people who felt overwhelmed with work. They don't like their, their work. I feel with, uh, well, especially to myself as well, right? The clients I get are a reflection of my own inner beliefs, but people who uh, feel unworthy of love, unworthy of money. I work with people who want to gain more money, like to attract money without having to put all the effort. Because um, for me, when I got my inheritance, when my husband passed away, I had you know quite a bit of money. And like the fear of like losing it all, the fear of like, it's not enough or I won't have enough for the long term. And I had a yeah. lack mindset. Oh my God, I could see everything that could go wrong instead of seeing everything that was going right. And so to allow, to stop allowing people's opinion yeah. um, on, on me and my, my situation to affect my vibration. So I help people with this feeling like, uh, so I did sound worthy, but also, um, I felt like a bad mother. So like guilt, like especially in grief, you go through all the, the ranges of emotion. So I help people with their grief, uh, sadness, uh, powerlessness. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. I feel stuck, right? So I help people reframe these, these things. Got it. And now in particular, I mean, you've worked with quite a few different people, right? From their anxiety, from their stress, uh, people doing career changes and services. How do you do it all as a mom? I mean, I commend you. Um, you know, it's it's a lot. And as a single mom, right? I've discovered, when I discover love attraction that I create my reality through uh, my vibration and, and thoughts, I discovered that Usually I was the type of person who would go forward, action, 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 action. I want to be successful. And then I learned that was the masculine energy. And I learned to step into my feminine energy and to see that everything is energy. Everything is vibration. If I feel stressed, I'm going to go into a situation and I'm going to reflect, like people are going to reflect that they're stressed too. If I feel I'm going to be late, I get there. And of course I am late because the universe always proves me right, right? Yeah. So, and I add evidence of this. Like I, I started slowly. It's been three years I've been working with this, but to know that everything is the right timing, but it's my timing. I'm never late on my own life. Because when you start comparing yourself to others, like, oh, they have this. Oh, they're going faster. I know. Yes. They have too many mm -hmm. followers. Like, but I know I'm going to get there, but I don't have to have it right now. Right? I don't need the evidence that I'm successful to some successful. I choose that I am. And then I let the universe bring me the evidence at the pace that I'm comfortable with. Then Could you remember, talk more about that law of attraction that you believe in? Could you enlighten us about that? Yes. So it's just about how you feel. It's actually the emotion is just a frequency, right? So you're mm -hmm. here, you feel happy. You attract everything that is on that happiness frequency. If you feel sad, you will attract everything that's on that sadness frequency. So it is not your, it's not the people that make you sad. It's not the people that trigger your, they trigger your sadness that's already within. So all circumstances are just neutral. They're not good, they're not bad. 
but the lens, the perspective I put on that story is what will get my emotional response out of it, right? So, so a guy, for me, example, a guy doesn't want to be with me. I can choose it's good or I can choose it's bad. I can give him the power to make me sad or say, well, somebody, somebody better is going to come along, right? The yep. universe always has my back. And for me, I had to work with this because if you believe things happen to you, I could be like, oh my God, my husband died. I'm done. This is, or I can say, well, the universe has my back. It happened for a reason. And I know if I'm honest with me, I want better, right? Yeah. It happened. I know it's unfortunate, but that was the best outcome for me and him and the girls. I don't know how yet, but I know it's the best outcome for everyone, right? Because once, if you go with the spiritual aspect of death, there's no death. There's a transition. You go back to source. You go back to having everything you want without the resistance. I follow Abraham X for those who, uh, who know her. Um, so yeah. And so that's why now instead of chasing, because I did get arrested for, you know, chasing a guy I love, I need to prove myself. And I'm like, no, I, I feel like this is such a weird story. But I, when I got into this story, I started to be conscious. Oh, I'm thinking this, this is happening. So I could see why things were stretching out in time. Why is he saying this? Oh, because I'm thinking this myself. Why mm -hmm. did this happen? Because I'm thinking this myself. Because yeah. it could have gotten a lot shorter, but I want control. I want to control the outcomes. I, instead of saying, the universe, do your job. I have the best lawyer. I don't need to do anything. He's going to ask me what he needs to do and everything's going to be resolved. Yeah. Or just everything's going to be resolved. But for me, so this story, I'm the girl who never, who doesn't drink. I'm the girl who never smoked, never used drugs, never like, I skipped class once in high school. I had really good grades. So I'm like the perfect person, like the perfect <laughs> girl who doesn't do anything bad. Yeah. Sometimes over the, the driving limit, but, and then here I am like getting arrested. But I'm like, okay, this is like, for me, you know, the ego, the ego was like, Ugh. <laughs> but I, I got to enjoy the process instead of saying, oh my God, this is a bad thing. Yeah. How can I use this to my advantage? Right. How can I use this circumstance, which was just a match to how I felt and my thoughts and use this. And then that's when I discovered love attraction of like you, what you, you create your reality. I'm like, huh, you create the good, but you create the bad, the bad as well. If you see it as bad, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's fascinating because you have this positive energy around you. That's just Clearly, we could all see it, feel it, hear it, and, um, you know, I, I want that. <laughs> so it's good. I'm attracted to you and what you have to bring to the table for so many of our listeners out there who are in need of so much help. Um, let's tell them how we can get in touch with you, just to point that out, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, is the website. Go ahead. Mary of my website is maryofmongrain.com. Actually, though, today, we are August. We are August. We're October Yeah. Uh, it is down right now the website is down so i'm not saying later it won't be tomorrow so you can actually today uh and every time you can contact me through instagram which is mary mongrain 90 uh if instagram and facebook are down like yesterday you can contact me to, to tiktok i do have a tiktok account as well <laughs> with my story my story is all over there like there's like hundreds of videos of me telling my story and all the good and the bad that happened i also the handle is mary mongrain 90 um, yeah, so you can contact me through there and phone number if you want, you can always yeah. message me or call me. Old school way, yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> one, five, one, oh my goodness, five, nine, four. Oh my God, I'm going to get back to you. I don't even know my phone well, number right um, now. Is it the number that I, I, is it uh, five, seven, nine or no? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> five, seven, nine, five, nine, four, seven, one, one, one. So that's five, seven, nine, yes. five, nine, four, seven, one, one, one. And the website will be up and running again soon. Don't worry. Uh, and that's M-A-R-I-E-E-V-E-M-O-N-G-R-A-I-N.com. Now, um, reading you know, your notes again, this is... Uh, Talk to me about the root cause of someone's issue. How do you get to the root cause? Talk about your coaching programs and what do you have to offer? Uh, how long do you need to work with someone to change this type of behavioral pattern and, you know, shift? Sure. Um, actually, I offer three months program because if you want to go long term when you're starting into this, uh, it's always good to have a program that's, la that's three months, even three months. Like I've been working on me for three years. And I've done this work on me like daily and daily, but to start, yeah, because I'm in the energy of the solution, you don't need to work three years on yourself, right? I already know the cause, like I already know what your brain is thinking and why you're, why you're attracting these kind of things. So I already 
can help that way. But like in a session, we will go and you want to try it now? Want to try it? Sure. I can talk about it all day long, but until you live it, uh, I was called a reframe ninja. And even people in the collective of Nick Bro, uh, which is the program I'm taking, uh, I have some friends that are like using my name as a verb. So you've been marrying now? <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so is there an emotion right now that you feel very heavy or that's stronger um, with you in your daily life? Um, I would say stress. I have stress. a lot of stress. Yes. Okay. So on a scale of zero to 10, how strong is that stress feeling? St- 10 being super like, oh my God, it's overwhelming and zero, it's gone. Um, today is actually like a, a seven day. So I feel a lot better, but normally with the working and balancing the kids and then the act to after school activities and the sports, and it's hard because I'm a single mom. So to try to juggle and then have to rely on, well, let me see if his dad's available or uh, the babysitter's coming. But today was an easy day. I mean, honestly, but overall, I'm overall worried about, you know, providing for my children, being a worker, being a good mom, and also being that sports mom. So, um, yeah, it, it, wears on me sometimes, but that's normal. I'm not going to complain. But that's not much. normal, no, but that's, that's just a belief, right? Because I'm a single mom, things are hard. That's a belief. Yeah. Not every single mom thing it's hard, right? It's just, if you believe it's hard, the universe say, okay, she thinks it's hard. Let's bring her evidence. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's so problem. easy. It's so easy juggling but like then, it's, right now, you're right. No, the positive mindset, okay. But it's not to bypass it, right? You gotta go, okay, it's hard. Now, what can I change? Because if I say this, I'm creating my reality to what I'm saying. So the stress feeling, you have not answered my answer, my question yet. Stress feeling, I feel stress on a scale of zero to 10. How strong is it? Right now, it's a seven. Seven. Perfect. I feel stressed because, and I want, I'm just before, I want you to give me like short answer. First thing that comes up. And I don't want you to start thinking with your head. I won't say this because that sounds. I'm just going to say whatever. So I feel stressed because I have too much to do in during the day and I'm not getting enough sleep. And okay. So you want to use the, I have too much to do, or I don't have enough sleep. Too much to do. I have too much to do. Okay. Because the not enough sleep is just a circumstance, right? Of all of this. So I feel I have too much to do because. Because I have a lot of things on my plate to do. (laughs) But it's a choice, right? I have all this. I choose because in life, when we feel powerless, a lot of times because I have to, all of this is coming at me, but you still have the choice. You're the one choosing to do those things that way. Right. Yeah. Because you feel like I have to do all these things because there's a part of you that believes if you don't do them, you're not good enough. If you don't do them, you know, I'm going to let my kids down because they want to do these sports after school. So it's really them. But I do have to do the work. I do have to do the responsibilities of getting them up and getting them out. And I have to work. But then the after activities, it's not for me. It's for them. But I can't let them down. So I do feel like I have to do it. That is you cannot let them down. But the universe is there to provide for them. If one day. As a friend, like, oh, mama, he wants, my friend wants to come and pick me up. That would be a way to help you re- to relieve that stress. Yes, yes. yes. Right? So, but if you say, I'm the only one who can provide this, the universe is going to be like, okay, she wants to control. This is the only way she believes she can get her kids to those activities. Then she's going to have to do it on her own. But if you're like, okay, universe, now I love my kids. I want to be there for them. I want them to grow and, and be who they want to be. I would also like to have some me time. And I, I can go and see them, but I have a hard time. So please, uh, however they get to there, they get there. I am okay with it if it's not me, right? Yeah. And then you're going to start attracting these people. that are like, oh, I can bring your kid. I know, you, oh, I know this, you're a single mom. Can I bring your kids? I know you're working so hard. You don't know the people you're going to start attracting when you start letting the universe end all the how things are going to happen. Wow. Right? Yeah, yesterday I got an email from the new class parent of my son's pre-K and she says, uh, I'm, I, she said she's widowed, which is, you know, sad. She's like, but I'm also, I'm home alone all the time. She's like, if anyone needs help with their kids, she said, if you need to pick up or drop off, let me know. And I was like, that was so nice that she wrote it to everyone in the class, but I'm thinking just in case I need help now I have her. Right. I mean, that's a great thing. I, I never thought I'd have that backup, which is awesome. And also just for her as a widow myself, you know, sometimes you don't want to use that because you're like, I don't want to put more on her plate, right? You don't want to put more on her plate. But actually for me personally, I would have like, when I have kids, because right now your kids are like all over you. Like, they want to play with mommy, blah, blah. I'm like, 
I don't want to play with you. I'll be honest. I don't want to play with my kids all the yeah. time. Yeah. I will go do outings. I'll go do fun things, but like not all the time. But now when they have friends over, they go play with their friends. I'm like, yeah, I would be okay yeah. if other parents like bring your kid. My kid's going to play together. It helps me be in alignment with like, I'm going to make healthy meals, healthy snacks, right? Yeah. So don't be afraid to use her. Like, she's offering it because she also, of course, she might be lonely as well, right? She's looking for friends maybe. Mm-hmm. No, but it, it's it's going to be mutual. Like it's not yeah. a give, give. It's, it's a give, give. So, but I still have too much to do. I feel this way because. I just do. Um, I, I, I do. And what is the worst thing that could happen if you had less things? The worst thing that could happen? I think it's a good thing if there's less things in my life. I feel a little more relaxed, a little at ease, um, able to be happier and a little less stressed out and not take it out on my kids. Um, you know, yelling this, no, no, yeah. So I think it would help me just overall as a person, me, let alone everyone else around me. So why do you not choose to do less? I feel like I can't. Okay. I feel like I can't. How strong is that on a scale of zero to 10? 10. And I feel like, like I can't because? I would let my children down, most importantly. Yeah, because if I'm not working, I can't feed them. If I'm not taking the sports to something they want to do, they'll be upset if I don't do it. But okay. Uh, gosh, this is getting deep. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I would, I feel I would let my kids down because they want to do these activities that I could care less if they do, but they want to do it. So I have to be their support system to take them. But you're not the only one, right? If you believe you're the only one who can be their support system, that means their dad's not going to step up the plate. Their other people are not going to step up the plate because the universe is going to keep proving your point. I'm the only support system. Right? If you believe it, I don't know how you were raised, but if you believe you're the only one, this is all you get. And so you staying home doesn't mean your kids don't get to do those things, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that their life is changed because actually if you do something that's good for you, it's better energetically wise than doing something that is out of like, I don't want to do it, but I'm doing it because I feel forced, right? You don't want to have friends over that are your friends just because they're forced to love you. You want right. people who are yeah. there genuinely and like who really want to be there, right? I, yeah. If anybody has a lot on their plate, please do your thing before you come and see me. I, I don't want you to have resentment against me no. for not having done your stuff, right? No, no, I get it. But and you're you right. Can- I can look for other ways. And I, it's I'm- not your job to look for other ways, it's the universe's job to yeah. look for other It'll happen. I and there's keep- an example that I, for me, that changed my whole perspective on life is imagine you are, in a, it's a hockey game. You're on a hockey team. And I may mm-hmm. have said it before, but it's a hockey team. And you're the one playing and you have the puck around. And then you go around and you go around. And then you try to score once in a while, but the rest of the team is like, hey, over here, over here. And you're like, no, it's me. I'm the one doing the work, right? It's fun to have like, to have the ego side saying, I did it myself. Yeah. Right? It's, it's fun to have that boost of like, yeah, I did it myself. I, I feel proud. There's other ways to feel proud, right? In receiving the help and support. But now you're like, okay, we score once in a while, but I know I missed a couple of times. But if I use my whole team and say, here, I'm giving you the puck. Now go score. I can sit on the bench and still win the game. Got it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But that, that team is your hockey team. It is your spiritual. It is your, your, okay, got you it. Don't, you don't have to see what's going on behind the scene, right? I have one, one, one client. She said, I can't see, you know, I, I want a boyfriend or I want this job. I can't see the movement like, because I don't see it. I don't believe it. I, I told her, do you see the leaves in my tree that are moving right now? Well, she's like, no, why? Well, they're moving because you don't see it does not mean it's not happening, right? True. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, because for me, I see it. I see the movement. The universe knows that your perfect partner is coming because he's doing the inner work. He's working his ass off to get the money. He's doing all of these things. And I'm sorry if I said that word. It's okay. You could say it. It's fine. You could say ass. (laughs) (laughs) But because you don't see it does not mean things are not happening. People are evolving as you change yourself, as you change your belief, because when you work and you change beliefs, You're not the same person that you were 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Right. When you're like, huh, I can start like being more at ease and say, okay, 
let me try this thing here. And then your, your belief change, everybody in your whole vibration changes. You're going to attract different behaviors from the people around you. And by doing this work, and a lot of people who are co-parenting with you know, parents that they would prefer not to. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, by working on your inner self, because that parent is also a mirror of the triggers you still haven't, like the wounds you haven't healed inside. Right? Yes. You see his face or you see your name, like, oh my God, I'm upset. Like, Ugh, it drives me nuts. Yeah, okay, well, let's go see where. Let's go see why. How do you feel when that person is around? You feel unseen. You feel unheard. Okay, well, let's go see what that unheard feeling is, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you're so ultra independent. Uh, ultra independence is also a trauma response. Like, I cannot count on my caregiver. So, I cannot count on my parents to give me the emotional support I need. Yeah. Uh, therefore, I have to take care of me. And then you learn to rely on yourself. And so, you're like, yeah, I can do it better because every time you ask for help, Nobody was there to support you the way you needed it. Yeah. Then this, you made the belief that you're the only one who can provide what you need. But this is a belief that you start changing. And for me, that I was a control freak. I, yeah. like, I could plan the good thing, the worst scenario, the worst case scenario all the time. I had like, I would leave. Guilty. Because every time I would leave, I would be sad, thinking it would be the last time I would see them and just like be crying like, I'm so loving because I cry every time I leave, but no, that's, that's just a response that I've worked now and going from anxiety and thinking like every worst thing that could go wrong to now like, okay, I don't need to control. I don't want to control anymore. Mm-hmm. I, want to say yes, I will follow my highest excitement and say, yes, yes. If it's a yes, yes means it's the right path. If it's a yeah, maybe, or yeah, no, you know, it's not alignment yet. That means it's a Got no. It. Got it. So for me, that's how it works. And so they want to do the activities okay, you can do it, right? I, and then you will find that the universe is going to help you release, either find some holes that you're going to feel okay with bringing them, but you don't have to stay there all the time, right? You can bring them, come back home. If, if it's part of it, like you, the universe is going to bring you these oppor- opportunities, but it's going to switch, 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 it's going to switch. So if you were in that mindset, you attracted all the activities that they wanted to do just because you feel overwhelmed. So you're going to attract everything, that makes you feel overwhelmed. So once you go and like, okay, I don't have to do all of this. I'm doing it because I feel like a bad mother if I don't. Right now you're going, you're doing something to compensate the feeling of feeling like a bad mother. It's not because you're a good mom, it's because you, you don't want to feel crappy, mm-hmm. right? So you're overcompensating and like, okay, their happiness is on me, but their happiness is also on them. and. The only way you're going to see happiness in them is when you start seeing happiness within yourself. Got it. Yeah. I would love for them to see me less um, anxious, less uptight. Um, You know, more relaxed bar is good for them, right? Yeah. If it's your highest excitement to be relaxed and just it's to their best advantage because they live with you all the time. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Going to do five activities during the week or doing three and having a mom who's happier and having a happier life. Right. So for me, I used to yell at my kids too. Like after my husband passed away, I was like, I was always the, the nice mom, like always like, oh, okay. And then I started yelling at my kids. I felt guilty. I felt, oh my God, I'm causing trauma. I don't want to cause trauma for later. I'm going to pay for therapy when they're older. <laughs> but now I could see him. Yeah. That behavior, whatever, has, has only triggered my pain. Yeah. Right. It's not the kid's behavior. I don't have to yell at them. So I started apologizing. Like I know you're just a kid. It's okay. If you drop a glass, be careful. And I know she dropped the glass because of how I felt, you know, because I know it's all energy, right? I can say it's them. It's them. No, because I felt like this, I'm attracting these things that are triggering it for it to be healed. And so I cannot blame my kids. If I like, I can, Oh, you broke the glass. Okay. Well, we'll just get another one or, Oh my God. Like, what did you do? Right. It's a choice. Yeah. Uh, you can become yeah. conscious of the why you react like this that's why i say, oh i feel stressed okay well this is why i'm healing it's not that my kids i'm upset i'm upset at me because i wasn't there to take care of them or like for me that was it oh she broke the glass because i wasn't there watching her or like so it, it was the upset was not about the kid it was about me got it got it. so the- advice i mean i have two we have two minutes left here so yeah. tell me some things i should be working on and doing then and you know for people listening at home uh what are some of the techniques now that i could practice to 
try to be that more relaxed, calm mom. So just say, okay, what is this situation mirroring of me? It's not about them because they're just, it's just a circumstance. How do I feel? Okay. Oh, I feel, I don't feel respected. I don't feel supported. Right. Cause it's not the kid it's because you're single. Right. Yeah. I, I did this. It's not because I'm alone doing this, this here, like this activity and I'm stressed out and not, just tired It's because I'm single. Cause my husband died. Like mm-hmm. I had to say, it's not because of my kids. Their needs are perfectly fine. It's because I'm by myself trying to provide all of this for them because he's dead. Like I, I always like, okay, how does that make me feel? I feel unsupported. Oh, so it's not my kids, bro. Like they can break glasses. If you have someone at home, it doesn't trigger because you have someone else like to help you clean up, right? Yeah. So it's not, the, it's not the kids. You just say, oh, what's the mirror? How do I feel right now? Not how they make me feel. How am I feeling right now? And then it's called this, the five whys. There's a, the, the, that's one of the techniques, but it's not that same technique. Just go, I feel this way because, I feel this way because, and I feel this I feel way, this because, way because, because. I feel this way because. Okay. And how do you find something that's outside? Okay. Because they said so. When Got I, like, it. My mom told me that before. And then you, we're going to reframe that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. So Maria Mongrain, tell us one more time how we can get in touch with you, please. Yes. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Mary Mongrain 90. Mm-hmm. And you can also find me on Mary Mon- MaryFMongrain.com when the website is back on. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. We appreciate it. Looking forward to the next time we speak. Bye-bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.